Hi, I'm Dr. Kim here. Thanks for the TVs again. Okay, today I want to share with you the story of eating. Okay, the last video I talked about how to plot eating. Uh, but I was thinking, after you learn how to plot eating, the next step is to interpret the eating, right? Uh, the hexagram. But I was thinking, uh, you should do that later. Why? Because the foundation of the eating is very important. I think it's important for you to know the background, some history of the eating. Okay, and specifically, all this takwa. What does it really mean? Okay. Mm. So same, first thing first, you go to drkim.com. Okay, then you click learn free. Okay, then you, under category, you click eating. Because I, I teach many stuff, okay? I teach psychology, I teach pneumology, right? Uh, I teach you folks a lot of things. Okay, so under eating, right? You look for the story of eating, okay? Which is today's video. Okay, so... Uh, let's start with the history first, okay? So, eating, uh, eating is one of the oldest Chinese classic, okay? As old as, like, BC 230, okay? So, that is, like, five, six thousand years ago, okay? So, uh, it starts with, uh, like, the earliest, uh, the earliest state of China. For example, uh, what I mean by that means, uh, Xia Sang Chao. Xia Sang Chao is, what, the warring state. Okay, the Zhangguo Yi, right? The three three states they are fighting and are always constantly in war. Uh, so eating, uh, that was the beginning of eating. Okay, so uh, during this state, a uh, warring state, right? There's this uh, uh, man called Fu Yi. Okay, Fu Yi he's the Gui Gu Zi. He's a disciple of Gui Gu Zi. Okay, and uh, uh, one day he was. Uh, sitting near the, according to the Chinese legend, okay, he was sitting at the Yellow River, along the Yellow River, okay, then uh, one flying horse, okay, flew up from the uh, river, okay, uh, then he saw the flying horse, okay, then what, what did he see? He saw uh, symbols and uh, images, formation images, all this on the horse back, okay, so from those images, uh, it has those images has inspired him to uh, to develop aqua okay hmm. then later on okay uh, Zhou Wen Wang when Zhou Wen Wang was captured right he was in prison okay so he rearranged Fu Yi aqua okay he rearranged his aqua and not only that he further developed his aqua okay he permutates aqua okay eight trigram into 64 hexagram Okay, uh, then after that, uh, Confucius, uh, who is Confucius? Kongzi. Okay, Kongzi, his name is called Kong Zhongni. Okay, Kong Zhongni. So, yeah, I know some of you make fun of his name, right? You call him Johnny Kong, right? Because Kong Zhongni, Zhongni, right? So, Kong Johnny, right? You call him. Okay, so he, uh, Confucius Kongzi, right? Uh, he spread the teachings. Okay, so that's how you and I get to know are eating today okay uh, but we have to thank Qin Shi Huang okay why why I say that because Qin Shi Huang okay uh, Qin Shi Huang he's a tyrant right he's a tyrant emperor okay so what did he do he burned all the scholars book okay he burned all the important classic books why because he's so scared that all these scholars will, will take away his uh, empire right he don't want anybody to be as more intelligent than him or as intelligent than him. So he burned away all the books. Okay, he's the one who built the Changchen, the Great Wall of China. Okay, so he 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 burned all the books except eating. Okay, so uh, why he didn't burn eating? Because uh, eating at that time was known as or was used as a medical book. Uh, so that's why we are lucky. Okay, also also thank thank you Jing Si Huang, right? He didn't he didn't burn this book. Uh, otherwise, this valuable knowledge will be what gone. Okay. So why I say uh, eating is a very valuable uh, knowledge, right? Because it talks about it talks about the universe. Okay, it has lots of wisdom in, in it. Okay, it talks about how 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 everything interacts. Okay, and uh, how how this universe actually works. Okay, there's lots of wisdom in it, and I hope you learn. From it, okay. Now let's come into the pakwa, okay? Ah, uh, pakwa, pakwa means what? Means there are eight trigrams. Trigram means there are three lines, right? 
the previous video I talked about this takwa, okay? How the takwa was derived. Okay, so you can have a look at the video. Okay, I'm not going to repeat that. So, a trigram means there are three lines, okay? Made out of yings and yangs. Okay, yin and yang. Okay, so can you have all yang? Of course, can you have all yin? Of course, can you have a mixture of yin and yang? Yes, of course. Okay, so uh, so from from this taqwa, right, we know there are eight trigrams. Okay, so there are eight types of three lines. Okay, so there are like what what they have. Okay, they have li gua, li gua. Okay, then they have qian gua. Okay, this is read as qian not gan qian gua. Okay, this is read as tui gua. Okay, this is read as Chen Gua. Okay, this is read as Xun Gua. Okay, and this is read as Kan Gua. And this is read as Ken Gua. Okay, and this is read as Kun Gua. Okay, now let's have a deeper understanding of all this Gua. Okay, so in the Pa Gua, right, uh, the Qian. Right, you can see it has all the young lines. Okay, three young lines. Okay, so the qian, okay, is qian and not gan qian. This is qian. Okay, qian long the qian. Okay, so this uh, qian, right, in Pakwa, it represents the father. In fact, it represents the heaven. Okay, uh, now Pakwa, you, you can, you, it can represent the family members. Okay, it can it can also represent like the universe, okay? Uh, it can also you represent directions. Can you see? Uh, northwest. Uh, okay, it can also represent uh, 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 the five elements, okay? Jing Wu Sui Tu. The metal, fire, earth, wood, and water element, okay? So it can have, it can have, it can have, it can have many representation. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the Tian Gua first. Okay, so uh, I start with the Tian Gua first. Okay, so the Tian Gua in Pakwa it represents the heaven. Okay, the sky, the heaven. Okay, so the sky, the heaven, everything starts the creation, right? Even some Bible also they stated that, right? Uh, the earth creation is what from the heaven, right? The heaven. Okay, so heaven means what? Heaven means the leader, correct now. Heaven means what? Like the father. Right? So the heaven can represent the father. Okay? Uh, so, the next one I want to talk about is the Kun Gua. Okay? The Kun Gua. Kun in Pakwa means the earth. Okay? Earth. So, do not speak on the earth. Okay? Because the earth represents what? The mother. Okay? Why earth represent mother? Why heaven does not represent mother but represent father okay uh, because father is a creator right uh, so mother is what mother is the earth okay so uh why why my earth is called mother is because for example if you throw apple seed on the earth you will get what apple tree right uh, so whatever you throw on the earth right uh, you plant on the earth right you will get it will multiply also Okay, uh, so you can produce whatever you you, you, you you plant on the earth. Okay, so the earth is what? The earth is Tao Rong means what? Uh, the earth has lots of what? It can contain lots of things. Okay, so that's why we call earth the mother earth. Okay, mm. and it's represented by the southwest section. Okay, okay, next I, I can I like to talk to you about is the Okay, Tui. Tui Gua. Tui Gua means Zhe. Okay, what is Zhe? Zhe is the pond, the lake. Okay, so small water. Right? Uh, so, so we have heaven, we have earth. So, we also have this thing called the pond. Right? So, what's the pond for? The pond is actually uh, for... Uh, uh, it, it makes us happy, you know, pond. Because why? Uh, what we have inside the pond, we have fishes, right? We have fishes. Uh, so the fishes live is in the pond, right now. Uh, so, uh, so it, it, it makes things very pleasant, okay. Mm. So the next one I'll talk about is the li gua, okay. The li gua represent the fire, okay. So also represent the middle daughter and is placed at the south sector, okay. So 
fire, the Li Gua fire. So why is fire also in aqua? Because fire, fire is it, it produces warm, right? It gives us warm, right? Fire can help us to cook the food also, right? So, so fire is important. Okay, it's also part of the element. Uh, it's an important element. Okay, if you want to survive uh, on the earth, okay? Then the next is the Xun Gua. Okay, Xun Gua represents the eldest daughter. Okay, it also represents uh, the wind. Wind means what? Wind means it will blow away, uh, for example, the leaves, right? Uh, blow away the leaves. Okay, for example, like how some plant they grow because the wind blow, alright? The wind blow, then the seed fly, right? And then land up on the pond, right? Sorry, land up on the earth, right? Uh, then near the pond, then the 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 seed will grow right because there's sunlight also right there's li also right <coughs> there's li also right ah. okay so zhen zhen gua zhen gua means ah uh, thunder okay thunder it means late it means zhen gua means thunder why why zhen gua thunder was also represented in the uh, bakwa it's because thunder means uh, moving okay and fast like thunder Thunder, right? Thunder, lightning strike, strike. So it's it's very fast. Okay, so fast like a lightning, right? Uh, okay, so uh, it means what? Something that is movable. Okay, uh, thunder, movable, fast. Okay, then uh, can quite can quite represent the mountain. Okay, so we also need mountain. Why? Because some mountain needs to stop us to do some things. Okay, mountain, mountain is like an obstacle like that. Okay, uh, or is yeah, it's an, like an obstacle, right? Uh, why, why, why in on earth sometimes we need to have mountain, right? Because if you want to cross that mountain, it's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult, right? Uh, so sometimes in life we need to do certain things, right? But it's good sometimes we meet the mountain. Why? Because it will stop us from doing some things. Okay, I give you an example. Like if 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 someone takes drug, smoke. Right or alcoholic or what? So if there's a mountain, means what? Means it will stop us, right? Stop us from doing the bad things. So, so mountain is is necessary in the bakwa. Okay. Then after that is the kan, the last one is the kan kwa. Okay, kan kwa represent water. So maybe you will ask me, hey, Doctor Kim, the is pond, lake, small water, right? Why why there's water again? Why do we have two type of waters? Okay, now. This water is the ocean, okay, the huge sea, the big huge water, okay, just like earth, right? Earth, how can you have how can you have pond? You need to have sea, right? Uh, otherwise, it'll be so hot, right? Mm. Okay. Okay, so this this images explain what I have just uh, explained to you, okay? So now I want to explain the, the hexagram, okay? I know the last round, the last video, I explained. The hexagram, but today I'll tell you tell you more, I'll teach you more. Okay. Okay. Now uh look at the line. Okay, the lines are made up of yang straight line or broken dashes and broken dashes line called in. Okay. So uh for the yang line, okay, for the yang line, straight line, yang line, okay, there's a name for it, right? We call it we give it a numeric nine, we call it Okay, so for the in right, there's a name also for the line. We call it new. It's like an identification like that, like your IC number uh, nine. Nine represent yang, right? Six represent in. So when you read the line, right? If you call me and you 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 say, uh, Doctor Kim, right? Uh, two chiu says what what what? Then I know already. Oh, two chiu means the first line, right? The first Yang line right at the bottom. Okay? So it's for identification purpose. But do not confuse this one with the Yang tree. Sorry, with the head. When you toss a coin, right? In the last video, I taught you how to toss the coin, right? Uh, if you toss the coin, you get a head of the coin. Means it's a number three representation. Okay? If you throw the coin, toss the coin, if it's a two, a uh, in is a two representation. Okay? So this is different, huh? This is the 
the identification of the lines. Okay, this one is the identification for the head of the tail. Okay, for three is young, for two is in. Okay, so do not confuse yourself. Okay. Now come. So uh two, so young, two, two. Okay, this one, eh? This one is called second line, right? So it's called Leo. Uh because why Leo? Because this is in, right? This one? This is called Yang. It's called what? Jiu San. Okay? So this one? This one called what? Correct. This one is called Liu Si. Because it's in, right? So it's called Liu Si. Okay? This one is called Jiu Wu. Jiu Wu. Okay? This one is called Correct. This one is called Sang Liu. Sang Liu means the last line. No more already. Okay, so can you have line 7, line 8, line 9? Cannot be, right? Because hexagram only has 6 lines. And you toss the tortoise, right, shell? You toss the coin 6 times. Okay? Okay, so uh, the next thing I'll tell you is, okay, the line 1, 3, 5 is always young. Because we know 1, 3, 5, Odd numbers always young. Two, four, six always in. Okay. So if let's say you plot a chart and then the bottom line, the first line, right, is young. So young supposed to be on line one, right? And you plot, you throw your first toss. The first toss is young. That means what? That means young is at the young position. So it's good or bad. It's good lah, okay? Because, because you're at the right position, right? For example, you're the father, right? You come home, right? Uh, and then uh, you sit on the dining table, you sit at the father's chair. Uh, so you sit at the right position. Correct lah? You cannot be sitting at the baby chair, right? Okay? So if it's young, right? If you plot one, line one, line three, and line five, if you plot young, right? Usually, we will call this the auspicious line because the yang sits on the yang and the if is in like 2, line 2, line 4, line 6, 2, 4, 6, line 2, line 4, line 6, they are called in. Okay, so if you if you toss a coin and you get an in at line 2, 4, 6, we will generally, right, generally, okay, not yet, right, generally, we can safely say, oh, it's an auspicious line. Okay, so... So it's always best like like sixty three qua sixty three qua is 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 sitting on every line is sitting on on at the right position right the yang sits at one line one line three line five right the in sits at line two line four line six okay so they are sitting at the the position where they should be sitting okay so the yang sits at the yang position the in sits at the in position okay so usually we will. We will, you know, on a general outlook first, on a general view, we will say, oh, this is quite auspicious, right? But is it really auspicious? Then, of course, you need to study the 63 hexagram. Then you need to go into my other post, my post, okay, with the 63 hexagram, you need to you need to read the line by line. Okay, so when you go into the post, you will see uh, the interpretation of line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5, line 6. So which one should you choose? Okay? Now, in eating, we don't choose which lines, okay? Because the, all the lines are talking about the situation, okay? What do I mean by this? It means that, you see, line 1 and line 2 will talk about the past, right? Line 3 and line 4 will talk about the present, right? Or, and line 5, line 6, right? It's a judgment about the future, okay? So, uh, the past can also mean present, this one is the near future. This one is what is going to happen. Yeah. So never pick the line and think, oh, line 5 very auspicious. Uh, I'll pick line 5. No. Okay. You, when you read the hexagram, you have to read everything. Okay. You have to read everything. Alright. Okay. Then the next thing I want to share with you is there's this thing called the changing line. 
since I'm talking about interpretation, I will share with you, okay? Uh, okay, we learned this on the last video, okay? So the changing line, right, is the most important interpretation if there is a changing line. Okay, you can see, right? So, so, so assuming this is your interpretation, okay? Assuming this is your interpretation. So you have current hexagram and you have changing hexagram. So how, which one should you read? Okay, you read the current hexagram, which is what is going on right now. Okay, then you look at the changing hexagram, which is the prediction, the judgment of the outcome, right? The future, what will happen? Okay, and you have to specifically pay attention to the changing line. You have to specifically, right, take instruction of this, because this too is very, very important judgment. These are like these are like like the follow through, okay? Like oh, uh, I I explain what's follow follow through, okay? Follow through means like for example like this one, okay? This is primary school, primary school. This is what secondary school. We we start from primary school, right? Uh, so primary school. So initially, this is the meaning, and so we need to read everything, right? So initially, let's say you you ask uh, how. Uh, how 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 is my marriage? So he, this line will tell you your marriage initially is like that. Okay. Then after that, primary school, you move on to what? Secondary school, right? After secondary school, you move on to diploma, right? After your diploma, you move on to bachelor degree, right? After you move to bachelor degree, what's the next level? You go to the master level, right? After master level, you'll be like me, right? Doing your PhD, right? Okay. So, uh, so every line, when you read, interpret, you must read every line. Okay. And this line means the beginning. Okay. This one usually means the outcome. Okay. It can also mean the past, the present, the future. It can also mean, for example, right? Like these three lines. These three lines is called the Xia Gua, right? This three line is called the San Gua. So the Xia Gua can represent you. Xia Gua represent you. Okay? Then the San Gua represent your, your spouse, right? If you ask marriage, then oh, your spouse. Okay? If you ask about your career, then maybe you and your boss, you and your colleague, something like that. Okay? You can, you can read it this way. Because Hexagram is made up of two pairs of trigram, right? One, two, three. This is one trigram, correct? One, two, three. This is the second trigram, right? So it's made up of two pairs of trigram, right? So some some masters, right, they will read this as you. Then sometimes they will read this as your, the, the person, okay? The opposite person, okay? Your opponent, for example, okay? Now, if there's no changing line, okay, if there's no changing line, which is the most important line, okay, it's the master line, okay, the master line, the outcome, right, this line is the most important line. So, can you safely say, oh, then I just read the most important line, I don't have to read all these lines. No, that's not how I Ching is interpreted, okay, in I Ching, you have to interpret every line, okay, just that so you pay more attention to line 5. Okay, usually line 2 and line 5, we pay extra attention to line 2 and line 5. Okay, because these two are the most uh, important line. If you see trigram, right, you split into half. This is the middle. This is the middle. Okay, so 5, master line, very important. Okay, but you have to read, remember, you have to read all the lines. Okay, now uh, there's another uh, 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 name for the line, okay, we call the Yao. Okay, you yaw, right? You shake this, right? Uh, yaw, correct. Yaw. So the first toss, the first three coins you toss is called the first yaw. Okay, the first toss is called the first yaw. Okay? So the three lines is called the xia gua. The top three lines is called the sang gua. Okay? I hope I'm clear. Huh? Yeah, so that's about all. So if there's a changing line, you, you can read this one, the current situation, then you read this one, okay, the future. 
then you pay attention to the changing line. Okay, but you still have to read all the six lines, okay? Because this is the initial, right? Primary school, remember? Uh, then slowly you proceed to secondary school, right? Uh, this is a progression. Okay, so you always read the whole chart. Okay, so that's all I have to share with you today. Now, next video, I'll be doing uh, individually the hexagram. Okay, I'll be doing hexagram 1 until 64. Okay, I'll explain one hexagram by one hexagram for you. Okay, hope you enjoy my video. Thank you.